What is up guys? Welcome back to Bob's Watches. My name is Brittany aka Watch Gringa and I'm currently house and dog sitting for some friends. Teddy, come say hi. Oh you can't, you can only just see him. He's quite big really though. Anyways, that's why the location is different. So today we are talking about my top three Rolex Grail watches. Any Rolex is kind of a grail, honestly. Back before I was into watches, I could name a small handful of watch brands, but Rolex would have been at the top of that list. And I would have thought of them as being something, you know, really wealthy people wear or something really aspirational. And I think when you get properly stuck into the watch hobby, steeped in it, if you will, we can forget how amazing it is just to own something as aspirational as a Rolex. I know I do. I get so used to just flipping through Instagram and seeing like Rolex after Rolex, expensive watch after expensive watch, and it begins to just feel normal. Owning a watch or considering to purchase a watch for thousands and thousands of dollars, that is not normal. So I just wanted to preface my video saying that. But also, we're talking grails. Not really, really cool Rolexes that I really like. Grails, which I feel like is a term that has been really cheapened to mean a watch that I think is very cool and could maybe be attainable. <laughs> and that's not what a grail is. A grail is so lofty, so unattainable. It's like a lottery win kind of watch. Like you have to win the lottery twice kind of watches. So I won't be saying like the Oyster Perpetual, <laughs> even though that's my personal favorite Rolex. That's not what we're doing. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about grails, baby. It's gonna be good for cinematic effect. Look, if I came into some real money, and I mean real money, this is the first one I'm going for. This is a true Rolex grail. Why do I keep smacking my hand? I feel like a dictator. <laughs> Having a Rolex Daytona 6265 Big Red is owning a little piece of history. The one Bob's has available right now is the Panda dial, silver, black subdials, and some gorgeous patina on the hands and hour markers. Just, this is vintage Rolex perfectly done. This watch is from 1978 and has lots of differences from the Daytona we know and love today. For starters, it's 37 millimeter, so much smaller than the 40 millimeter we know today. And the 37 millimeter sizing only makes me want it more. It would be the perfect size for me. And this is from the last generation of manually wound Daytonas with the legendary Valjou 727 movement. Beautiful, rare, iconic. I mean, what more do you want from a grail? This is my favorite modern Daytona, the 116508. Green dial, yellow gold, nicknamed the John Mayer. I'm actually still cross with John Mayer for hyping this one up. Couldn't we have kept it a secret? You simply cannot get these anymore. If my AD called and offered me one of these right now, I'd be like, just, just take my money. Let's go. Let's go. She says as if she has that kind of money. <laughs> so this is my all time favorite color combination, emerald green, 18 karat yellow gold. It has all the same specifications as your normal Daytona. So 40 millimeter case, the automatic 4130 movement, giving you 72 hours of power reserve, 100 meters water resistance, if you see this one in person, the green's actually a lot darker than it looks in pictures. In certain lighting, it can almost look black. And of course, with it being all yellow gold, bracelet and all, she's heavy. She's got a bit of wrist presence, but just a beautiful watch and truly deserving of grail status. Yeah, I think, I think we all know I will never own this watch. I mean, the Platona. How can you argue with this? This is the one. She's big, heavy hitting, and a completely unique Rolex. Icy blue dial, chestnut brown ceramic bezel, and of course the 950 platinum. I think this is the most expensive Rolex featured on the Bob's website right now, and for good reason. In all of the specifications, it's the same as every other Rolex Daytona, but what sets it apart is the material, platinum which is such a rare material for Rolex to use, making this 
insanely collectible. This is one of the few Daytona references not offered on the Oyster Flex as well. The others being the steel, and for some reason I think the John Mayer isn't either. Or the white gold with the blue dial. There's actually a few. <laughs> There's probably more. I have actually once had the opportunity to try one of these on in person. Whew, she's a heavy beast. It's very heavy on the wrist. It's that platinum. But I feel like if I was ever in the position to buy one of these, and that's a big if, I would just have to train my wrist <laughs> to do like wrist exercises to get it ready. Oh, that could go in a lot of dirty directions. Let's edit that out. <laughs> oh God, I've just realized. I've only said Daytonas. <laughs> I was just about to wrap up the video. I was just about to say the like, comment, subscribe when I realized I've only said Daytonas and we can't have that now. Let's put in a non-Daytona. Now, I'm not sure if this one fully qualifies as a grail, but it would still take a lot for me to afford this one. And it's one that I think isn't talked about nearly enough. Not Daytona, ooh, ooh. The Rolex Steve McQueen, come on now. The one we have here on the Bob's website is Albino. So usually this watch is instantly identifiable through the orange 24 hour hand. But this one being vintage, the orange has faded to white, giving it a far more subdued look. This is the choice of the true watch geek to me. This is someone who made an informed decision. Someone who wants a watch that's a little bit different, but still a very cool watch. On the face of it, this watch isn't really a big hero in the Rolex lineup, particularly when it comes against some heavy hitters like the Submariner or the Pepsi. But this watch began to gain some notoriety when it was rumored to have been worn by Steve McQueen. I can't find pictures of Steve McQueen wearing it, but hey, who knows? <laughs> who has anything to gain by running that rumor? edit that out. <laughs> but anyways, guys, these are just some of my Grail Rolex watches. There are so many Grail Rolexes someone could choose. I would love to hear some of yours. Let us know what is your Grail Rolex in those comments down below. And don't forget to do all those sweet, juicy, delicious things to feed the algorithm god. Give this video a like, comment, and of course, subscribe to Bob's Watches. Are you not, are you not subscribed yet? You need to get subscribed. This channel's awesome. <laughs> And until next time, guys, bye.